This is the story of a protein that thought he could have it all. A tragic tale of suffering and despair. Of dashed hopes and unfulfilled dreams. Where purpose and identity are put into question. This is the story of Flap Endonuclease. It all began deep within the walls of his cell, when Flap Endonuclease, or Fen as he likes to be called, was first assembled by the ribosome. He instantly realized there was something special about himself. Fen was an enzyme that was built to slice DNA, but this is not what made him unique. He noticed that he was not simply an endonuclease, and he wasn't just an exonuclease either. He was both. Fen realized how his endonuclease activity would be particularly useful in cleaving a 5' prime overhang from a DNA molecule. The double-stranded DNA could enter, and the hydrophobic wedge within him would keep the break open and accessible. The hydrophobic residues in his wedge, such as methionine and leucine, bind to the base pairs of the 3' prime flat, while the 5' prime flat is secured tightly in his helical gateway. His gateway consists of multiple lysine and arginine residues attached to samarium ions, which bind to the phosphate backbone of the 5' prime flat, specifically at the point where the molecule will be cleaved. Ben's cap at the side of the gateway acts as a structural barrier, allowing only the single-stranded 5' prime flat to enter. The unbroken strand of the DNA molecule is held in place by interaction with a potassium ion, as well as its H2TH domain and hydrophobic wedge. In order for him to position the sessile phosphate in his active site for cleavage, two of the DNA base pairs must be unlinked. Fen does this by contorting the DNA back to 100 degrees, which shifts the 5' prime overhang into his active site, where the Sumerian ions can bind the flap properly and the phosphodiester bond can be broken. And this is just the endonuclease portion of his activity. Using his exonuclease activity, Fen can chew off nucleotides one at a time from the 5' prime end of a DNA molecule. This requires a similar mechanism, with the 5' prime arm entering his active site. However, this time there would be no 3' prime flap since the DNA would not have an overhang. The lack of a 3' prime flap to bind to reduces his efficiency by a small margin but he can still function well as an exonuclease. Seeing all of his potential, Fen felt he could play a huge role in the cell. He was a DNA slicing machine, and with all the power within him, he felt that he could make big changes for the better. However, reality proved to be harsh for little Fen. Other exonucleases and endonucleases were already abundant in the cell, and he went around trying to get any job he could find, but everything he wanted to do was taken. Fen was distraught. All he wanted was to cleave DNA, and he was more capable of doing so than the other DNases that only had one activity or the other. When an opportunity finally arose for Fen, he quickly accepted and got straight to work. However, because of the nature of his job, Fen quickly realized he was still unhappy. Fen was tasked to work in DNA repair, which is expected of an endonuclease or exonuclease, but the specific branch of DNA repair he was working in was base excision repair. This type of repair is used to amend DNA damage that results from an incorrect base being inserted into the sequence. After the base was removed, polymerase would synthesize new DNA at the resulting gap, creating a small flap that Fen had to remove using his endonuclease activity. Fen was furious doing this work. He felt his talents were being wasted, that he was just the janitor, cleaning up after the mistakes his higher-ups were making, when really he should be up there with them. He traversed over to the DNA replication hub in the nucleus of the cell. Here it was constantly busy. The place was full of life and action, as new DNA was mass-produced every second. Fen needed a job here. He talked with DNA polymerase, and after a compelling speech, DNA poll accepted, on the condition that he also kept up his previous job. Fen was thrilled and immediately got to work again. His new responsibility was to trim off the resulting five prime flaps that were made during the construction of Okazaki fragments by polymerase delta. He would do this constantly since DNA was replicated so frequently in the cell. He was satisfied at first, however he quickly realized that it was the same job, just in a different location. He was still on cleanup duty, and was only valued for his endonuclease activity, with his exonuclease activity rarely being utilized. Fen wondered if he should be happy just doing his part to take care of the cell, even though he could be so much more. Was this the fate of every protein in the cell? To put aside their wills and dreams to settle for a job they were designed to do? 
He tried to find pride in the idea that only he could fulfill the task of trimming five prime ends off of Okazaki fragments, but deep down he knew that that wasn't what he wanted to do. He also knew that if every molecule in the cell tried to do what it wanted to do, instead of performing their assigned task, the cell would fall apart within minutes due to their own selfishness. And so, Fen continued to work, hoping that one day he would finally find meaning and happiness in the job he was born to do.